Okay, Dr. Step. I just want to delve into one last piece about the, um, what is the system? The um, 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 probation system. The probation system. And hearing from you the perspective, because you've already told me that when you dealt with the social worker, when you deal with the education, you look at things from the grassroots, see what's going on, and you make the change. Do when you went into the probation uh, position, I'm sure you had to see a lot there in terms of cruelty, disrespect, um, intentional bad things. So I want to just hear from you. Well, what did you think of when you first went into it, and what did you do to make changes? I think there is a lot more sweetness in probation historically than most people realize. Okay. The kind of person that you've just described, I've saw very seldom. Really? And as a chief, every time I found one, I dealt with it. Okay. So my approach has always been, don't judge it by the color, both of them the facial color, but the behavioral color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could see a lot of the retired Navy officers and high-level people were the ones that had the biggest pain in the butt, as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. But I saw that a lot of the probation officers, because you had a choice during my time, mm -hmm. you could either come into the probation department as a junior probation officer or into the welfare department as a junior worker. Mm -hmm. Those were the two options, and it was one exam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh? And, and so one of the things I think, I've always been a believer in, I don't want to tell you about it, I'm simply going to show it to you. Mm -hmm. I think people respond to what they see from leadership. Right, right, right. Leadership can have a significant impact on the relationships, the attitude, and the rest of it mm -hmm. for those that are on the line. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that I don't know this probation department now, mm -hmm. but I do know that you got a woman probation officer, I've met with her, mm -hmm. and without trying to overpower anything, I simply said, if you ever need any help, if you ever need anything from me, just give me a call mm -hmm. and give her my card. Well, the last thing I've understood is that she's doing a pretty good job. Okay. But that's all rumor mill. I've not had personal relationships that I can make that as my personal statement. Okay. But I do know that it's a very difficult alignment. Mm -hmm. You know, probation department was not just a probation department because we branched off and took over the honor camps. The what camps? The honor camps. What's that? Well, there used to be a, when you were sentenced, you could go into the honor camps. We had firefighting camps. I was a superintendent of one of the father's camps at Camp Westford, mm -hmm. and we did federal firefighting. Okay. And so it, there's not a place in the probation department I didn't personally work. Okay. And so it was easy then for me as the chief to be able to talk from firsthand knowledge mm -hmm. to line staff and the rest because I made it a point of meeting with groups of probation officers all the time and making sure they understood what my value systems were. You're law enforcement officers, no question about that. Right. Your, your job is to have a person that you're dealing with be obedient to the instructions from the court. Okay, how you do that is what makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You could be a real snake in the grass, a pain in the ass, mm -hmm. but you can also be a person that says, how can I help you get to that next level? Right. And I found more that were willing to do that than the old attitude about I'm big, tall, and tough. Mm -hmm. I don't think that probation has really being given the credit that it deserves. The, the time period in which you began that journey of your life, what, what years were those? Oh, I think you got all that in my history. Okay, okay. Because I would love to know because of the I, I time to... period makes the, the, makes the difference. 
I tried to lay out my history in a fashion that says I went from this assignment and mm -hmm. was there for that many years. Mm -hmm. I went to that assignment and was there for that many years. Mm -hmm. So that if okay, I so was... So it was from 1980 to 1992 that you did that? That's 12 years as the chief. Okay, so 1980 is a little, it's, it's a different period. So we're talking more more along the lines of, of I hate the term equality because we have never reached equality, but at least it wasn't in as theory. segregated <laughs> situation at that point. It so, was the assumption without the reality. Right, so were you dealing, did you have uh, predominantly African Americans underneath you, or was it a balance of both? I had everything. Okay. I had everything from top to bottom. Okay. And I made sure that promotions were talked about people of quality. Mm -hmm. And so I was responsible for promoting a lot of black and Hispanic people upward. Mm -hmm. Not because they were black mm -hmm. or Hispanic, but mm -hmm. because they had quality. They had shown their juice. Right. And, and, and it even got to the point where I did something that everybody thought was just unprofessional, mm -hmm. I would have a teaching session at my church. Mm -hmm. People who wanted to talk about getting prepared for the exams. Right. Well, why I, is that unprofessional? That just seems like a tutoring situation. But from your boss? Why? Well, who better to tutor you than somebody that knows the elements of what it is that you need to do? But that was the issue. Now you're talking about union engagement. You're talking about all kinds. Wow. Why is the chief out there doing this with all these poor folks? Why not? I, well, yeah. you and I knew why not, but yeah. it didn't make a difference to me because I just made it more quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I always knew that the, the black leadership, you call me when you need me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll be wherever it is. The thing that I wasn't going to do, I was not going to give anybody any answers. Mm -hmm. Because you needed to take these exams and you need to know enough about it and pass it on your knowledge, right. not on a stolen gift from me. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so everybody understood that. Okay. And, and so I would talk to them and just as straight as I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. And I would talk about how to think your way through to questions to answer. Mm -hmm. How to understand what the question is really asking for. Mm -hmm. So answer what they're asking for rather than what they've asked about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, those were test things that I thought, having gone through all these years of all these testing, but you know, they, they test you for just about anything. Mm -hmm. How to spit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then so... I just felt that was my job to do, mm -hmm. but I wanted it to do it underground. I did not want to be writing a notice that said, the chief is going to have a meeting with all you people who are getting ready to take tests. No, right. no. Right, 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 right. Black leadership, Hispanic leadership, I'm available. Right, right, right. Tell me. And, and my church is right across the street from Gompers. Okay. And I've been there forever. This one right here? This one directly across? Yeah. So what is Choice that? View, United Methodist Church. Um, let me can I, let me step outside for a minute because I believe that the uh, somebody that I know was a part of that church. Yeah, that, that one right there, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah. Um, you might know the, the young lady. Her name was Sachiko. Sachiko? Oh yeah, Sachiko, okay, yeah. Okay, so and Bunny and her, Right. Yeah, yeah, I okay. knew more. <laughs> Right. Bunny so, Sachiko was, she was there before I arrived. Uh huh. And her daughter, son, and everybody, mm -hmm. they all grew up in. Okay, Trey's so then, group. so then, then it lets me know that you definitely do know James Tillery, my significant other. I'm because sure. Because if you know, if you remember them fondly, then you remember Paul, and Paul yep. was in his band. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that's why he's a musician to this day, cause, yep. because of uh, James Tillery. Yep. But okay. All right. So I I'm glad to hear all of this about you. Um, what I want to know from you is if you wanted people to remember something about you, what in particular would you, would you want them to remember? That I gave a damn. There. That right there. That's all I need to remember. I gave a damn. That right there. 
and I was in a position where I could make something happen. That right there. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Entirely. I, I want to thank you for entertaining me in, in my curiosity. Because like I said, I ain't nobody. <laughs> no, you are, you, you are somebody. You know, and I, I just, I just... I appreciated your honesty. I appreciated your approach. I appreciated who I saw in you just out of that small glimpse of time and just wanted to spend a little bit more time with you personally and get to know you. And I thank you for giving me that opportunity. Well, I'm thanking you for asking me. Yeah, okay. I just, you know, I, I woke up this morning and didn't have the foggiest idea where it was going and said, I don't care. <laughs> Ask me, you know, I'm a truth teller. Right, right, right. If you don't like what you hear, oh, that's the way life works. <laughs> well, I, I, I say that I love what I heard, you know, I love what I heard. And the opportunity to do this, I, I couldn't set it aside because after we had made this appointment, um, I decided to embark upon a different journey. Well, let me see. But that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh. Thank you so much, Doctor. I appreciate you giving me the time. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad that you, you let me know. Mm -hmm. That's the whole purpose in life. Each one teach one, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay.